Well, welcome everyone. We're on lesson seven. I'm looking forward to doing this lesson with you today. It's a very fun lesson. Um, I think it's uh, an exciting lesson because we're going to learn some new blocks in MBlock and we're going to take our learning to the next level. We are on lesson seven and lesson seven is a lesson called Pandas Travel. As a reminder, when you download the lessons that you um, get multiple files along with your download. And so in this week's lesson, we have our slides, we have our power, um, our lesson plan and PDF. And then we also have three example programs as well as a video of um, the program I'm playing. It's also embedded in the PowerPoint for you when you present this with your learners. But in this lesson, we're going to jump into some new features. But I wanted to review quickly what we did in our previous lesson. In lesson six, we looked at gliding and costume changes and changing things to specific costumes. And in this lesson, we're going to um, do that. We're going to do that with backdrops. We're going to learn how we can change the backdrops as well as um, to specific backdrops, just like we did specific costumes in the previous lesson. We're going to do that in this lesson. What I really like about this lesson is um, previously we looked at how we can control our program and as the programmer we gave instructions to the program and to the sprites and the backdrops on what the program should do and then the program did what we told it to do and then we used keyboard input to allow the player or the user of the program to control the program um, in real time by using the keyboard the space key the arrow keys the wasd keys we've used different keyboard input in the previous lessons as well. But in this lesson, we're going to have the program, we're gonna program it to have the ability to make its own decisions, to make its own decisions. And we're gonna use conditional statements to do that. So it's a very exciting time. Some of you in the last lesson, in the questions after the lesson, were asking, can, can we just use an if statement to do this? And so I knew we were getting there very soon, and now we are there. In lesson seven, we're going to look at conditional statements. So this lesson is still a beginner lesson, but it is a little bit more advanced than the ones we've done previously. But the way the lesson is laid out, it should be, um, it should be a pretty beginner lesson for your learners. In this lesson, we're going to create a program in mBlock using conditional statements. We're going to use motion blocks to control the rebound and the rotation of a sprite. So now we're going to look at rotating sprites. We're going to define a conditional statement, make sure we understand what that is, and we're going to describe the functionality of a computer program. So we're continuing to bring in activities in this lesson where your learners are um, able to explain what their program does. So it's one thing to be able to make the program, but also it's very helpful for your learners to be able to explain and describe how a program functions because that um, is an opportunity for them to release what they're learning and be able to communicate around computing using all the vocabulary that they've learned. So we've been following this character Panda and Panda arrived to Earth from a galaxy far, far away. And Panda has um, learned about sports and has met new friends. And in this lesson, we're going to see that Panda has visited many places on Earth. And we're going to um, create a slideshow that showcases the places that Panda has visited. And we're going to have Panda turn around and walk across the slideshow, as well as when Panda reaches the edge of the stage, Panda's gonna automatically turn around and walk in the opposite direction. And we're gonna use a conditional statement to decide when blocks of code should run. We're gonna see how that works in this lesson. And the main focus of this lesson is using those conditional statements, using those conditional statements. So as a reminder, as we go through these lessons, there's a warm up. There's usually guided practice, independent practice, as well as a wrap up. And in the warm up, we always review the previous lesson. And um, then with the activities and lesson in the webinar format, I sometimes am talking to you as though you are a student. And I'm sometimes talking to you as though you're a teacher to give you those teacher tips behind the scene. 
So um, we're going to move over to the slides at this point, but you can follow along with the lesson plan. The lesson plan does contain the answers and the behind the scenes information that is not in the slides. And so sometimes we will switch back and forth, but I'm gonna head over to the slides and teach from the slides as we continue with this lesson. So in the last lesson, we met Jordan. Panda came to the soccer field and met Jordan and Jordan was practicing penalty kicks. And Jordan sometimes made the goal and sometimes um, missed the goal. And we used a few different blocks to see um, Jordan make the kick. And we were able to move to specific costumes, switching to specific costumes to control which costume um, Jordan had to show the motion of the kick, that animation, um, because our costumes were not in a specific order and we also needed to repeat one of the costumes. We also used the glide to, the glide motion block in contrast to the go to. The go to is instantaneous. The glide, we see that motion across the stage and we learn how to show and hide sprites so that we can um, have them show or hide on the stage when we um, need to see them. We can control their visibility. In this lesson, we are going to make a slideshow for Panda to showcase five places pandas traveled to while on earth. And so this lesson, the lesson plan tells us to play this video for our learners. Um, so you would play the video and students are to write an explanation of the program and they can use the following questions to guide them if you feel that your learners need additional guidance or support. So what action does Panda perform when the program starts and what happens when Panda reaches the edge of the stage? Those are the two questions we're going to observe. What action does Panda perform when the program starts? So when I start the program, what does Panda do? And then what happens when Panda reaches the edge of the stage? Okay. So I'm going to play this. Those are the two questions. What action does Panda perform when the program starts? And what happens when Panda reaches the edge of the stage? Okay, so we're observing. What happens when Panda eat, reaches the edge of the stage? And what happens when we start the program? Okay. I'm gonna start that video again so we can see the start of the program. It clicks now as the start of the program. Okay, so who would like to in the chat throw some answers? What action does Panda perform when the program starts? What happened when the program starts? When we first started the program, what did Panda do? Panda begins to walk left. That's a great observation. Panda walks left. Is anything else happening with Panda? Watch Panda again. When Panda walks left, what's happening? When we say walk, but what we learned in a previous lesson how to make Panda walk. What is happening to Panda to make that, make Panda appear to be walking? Because Panda's moving, but what else is happening with Panda? Yes, we got costume changes. Great observation. So Panda's costume is changing. So Panda is moving to the left and the costume is changing. Those are the types of observations your learners should be able to um, see happen when they play this program because of the previous lessons that we've used. Now, what happens when Panda reaches the edge of the stage? What do you see happening when Panda reaches the edge? Okay, something happens to Panda and something happens to the stage. Okay, the background changes every time Panda reaches the edge of a screen, edge of the stage, the background changes, great observation. And some of you are also got it, Panda 
turns the other direction, that opposite direction. Panda turns around. So if Panda was walking left, Panda's now walking right, and then vice versa. And so Panda flips the opposite direction and walks the other way. Perfect. Um, now, Panda does not walk backwards. Do you notice that? When Panda goes the opposite direction, Panda actually faces the opposite direction. Panda does not walk backwards. And we're going to learn that as we go through. Those are some great observations. Those are some great observations. Now, this lesson has a has the video embedded in, and there is a note in the lesson plan. This example program is the independent practice for this lesson. So you want to be cautious to show the code to your students during this portion. We do not want the learners to see the answers to this project at the end. So that is why I did not open the project and showcase the project and instead I played the video. So I played the video because we want the students to see the project run but we do not want them to see all of the um, we were, we do not want them to see all of the code. And then of course there's an opportunity here for you as the instructor to review your students and learners descriptions to see if their descriptions describe those functionality of the of the program. Now this is a great practice of decomposing decomposing this project. So we have a completed project. This is our completed project. And if I wanted to recreate this, what do I need to do and program my program to include in order for it to be the same as this one? And so to do that, we broke down this project or decomposed this project into a few different pieces of its functionality. We looked at the animation of Panda walking. We looked at the background changing. We looked at the costume changing on Panda. We noticed that Panda turns around and walks the opposite direction. All of those are sub problems that were solved with this problem, with this project. Great job, great observations. So we'll continue in our lesson and we're going to actually begin to learn how to program this program. So again, when we're in these lessons and on the webinar, at this point in time, I switch over to the mBlock program so that we can follow along in mBlock. But the lesson plan as well as the slides include the step-by-step -step instructions for you to follow these or to um, give to your learners to follow. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to bounce and rotate. So that's what we, um, that's what happened when Panda reached the edge of the stage. Panda bounced or rebounded, turned around, and, ro and, and that's that rotation piece. So there's two blocks that we're going to use to do this. We're going to use the if on edge bounce, which means that if the sprite touches the edge of the stage, it will bounce or move in the opposite direction. It will turn around. Um, and then we will set the rotation style of the sprite to left and right rotation only. And we will look at what that means and what that does as we work through this activity. Okay, so in this um, lesson plan, in this lesson plan, there are three programs in this um, lesson has the learner do this um, independently. They go into the program and they make these three programs and they compare and contrast and they write a, a paragraph comparing these three programs and they're going to explain what happens with each one of these. So I'm going to do that with you because I want you to be able to observe and see what happens with each one of these programs. So we're going to do this together. So in mBlock, in mBlock we can be in a new program in mBlock. Remember when you make a new program, we are automatically have Panda as the default and we can head to the Sprites tab. And we're going to make these three programs. Well, I'm going to make the first one first. And so it's when the green flag is clicked forever, move five steps and switch to next costume. Okay. We've looked at this before. We know what this does. This is not a new program for us. Um, we're just making it in this project. 
So when I run this program, we're going to observe what happens. We're going to run it and observe. And this is what your learners would do. They would make the first program, run the program, and observe what happens. And then I will write a description of what happened. What happened when I ran that program? So a description that you might have, a description that a learner might give is that this first program, program number one, Panda moves forward and has a walking animation because of the next costume. It appears to be walking and it moves forward. And when it reaches the edge of the screen, it continues to walk in place because it cannot move forward anymore. And it appears that Panda is stuck. We've done this in a previous lesson. So that is a review of a previous lesson. Okay. So now let's do program two. And I'm just going to drag Panda over. Panda two is includes if on edge bounce, which is under motion. If on edge bounce. If on edge bounce. Okay. Now, when I run this program and observe what happens, it, there's a big difference here. There's a difference with this program than there was with the previous program. So now this is where that compare and contrast comes in. Your learners will describe what happens when they've used this, when they create this program. And so when they create this program, they should observe that when Panda reaches the edge of the screen and edge of the stage, instead of getting stuck, Panda turns the other direction, the opposite direction. Okay. However, what's wrong? What's wrong with this animation. What do we see that's a little bit odd? You know, Panda is upside down. That's not what we want. We don't want Panda to, to walk upside down. That's not realistic, right? So this is where the third program comes into play. So when we are in, um, in the motion block category, we have a set rotation style and it can come before or after, it doesn't matter. But there are different rotation styles that you can have. There is the don't rotate. So if we don't rotate, Panda will always face the direction that Panda was set to face, which is to the right, which that then Panda's walking backwards. There's all around, which allows Panda to go upside down, and then there's left and right. And so when we're working with 2D animation and we're having uh, sprites go across the screen, the rotation style left and right is very helpful and that we can see here now Panda appears to turn left and turn right when Panda's walking across the screen. Okay, so in this example, we want our learners to be able we want our learners to be able to observe the code and make their own observations about what the code is doing. We're getting to the point in these lessons where we're not going to, as the teacher or as the instructor or the parent, we're not going to be teaching the learner everything there is to know about, um, about each block. We want them to start to learn by observation and learn through practice and exploration. And this activity lets them explore the programs and observe, observe what happens with those slight differences. By adding that one block, it changes the functionality of the program. Okay, so there are three ways to rotate, which is what I just showed you. There's the don't rotate and the all around are options as well. And you will see in the lesson plan, if you're following along with the lesson plan, you will see that um, there are some examples of observations. The explanation of each block is there as well as if time permits, encourage the learners, your students to try the don't rotate and the all around so they can observe how those settings change the functionality of our motion of our sprite. So that's a really great, these are really great um, blocks that we're going to use in this lesson as well as in the next lesson. And so they're just a very useful tool to understand how to make a character not get stuck on the edge of the screen and to turn around and keep moving. Because now that we've programmed that, Panda will never stop walking.
until we stop our program because we have a forever block there. So Panda will forever move left and right, left and right, left and right. So that's the first example of this lesson. And I want to continue. Um, this lesson plan incorporates a really fun game, which we are not going to be able to play virtually on the webinar. However, I want to explain to you how you would play this game, whether you have a classroom full of learners or you have um, just your child, if you're a parent, you know, you can play this game. It's a game that we call conditionals game. And it's a game where um, similar to a game called Simon Says in the United States, but it is a game where the instructor or the, the teacher gives commands and the, the learner will obey the commands. So in the lesson plan are some examples of commands that you can, you can give to your learners. But you're going to, you can write your own as well. But we want our students to have this understanding of um, exposure to a conditional statement before we teach them what a conditional statement is. So we haven't taught, I haven't taught you yet or defined what a conditional statement is, but you should be able to play this game. Um, so if your name has the letter S in it, then raise your hand. If your name has the letter S in it, then raise your hand. And if you are working with a classroom full of learners, some students would raise their hand, some would not. If you have a pet cat, then clap your hands. If you play a sport, then stomp your feet. If you are wearing socks, then touch your feet. If your favorite ice cream is chocolate, then say yum. So it's, it's this idea of if this condition is met, then do this, okay? So these commands are examples of conditional statements and in programming conditional statements are used to perform specific actions if a condition is true. That's very important. So if a condition is true, then the action is performed. And we're going to see that and translate that to writing with our programming blocks, to program with our programming blocks. Okay? And so a conditional Here's an example of what the blocks look like for a conditional or conditional statement, okay? And we're going to look at this as well, but this is a conditional statement is if the condition, in this case, the condition is touching the mouse pointer, if the condition is true, then perform the, the action that is inside of that block, okay? In previous lessons, in previous lessons, the event blocks that we used to trigger a, were, were when a key is pressed on the keyboard and when the green flag is clicked. But when a program is already running, we can use that conditional statement to decide whether to run a set of blocks, um, a specific set of blocks. So we're going to practice this. We're going to practice this and we're going to create this program um, and we're going to do that by creating a new program so if you want to save if you want to save this example you can um, as a reminder we give you example programs and this program is already in your files the example for this is already in the files so you do have this example already so you may not want to save it okay so we're going to make a new program and we're going to practice a conditional statement and we're going to practice this this one here um it's very important when working with conditional statements that you you get in the practice of reading your program with your learners so remember i've said it multiple times in previous lessons to read what the program says it's a very good thing to a skill to develop so in this program we, when the green flag is clicked or start the program, when the program starts, show the sprite, check if the condition is true, if the condition is true, or if the, if the sprite is touching the mouse pointer, then run the code inside the conditional block, repeat steps two and three until the program is stopped because it is a forever repeat block, so it will repeat forever. It will show and it will hide when you touch the mouse pointer, okay? So we're using two new blocks here. We're using an if 
an if statement, a conditional statement. It's an if then block, and we will find that in the control area. And then we are also using a new block, which we will use in this lesson as well as future lessons. We're using the sensing block, and we're going to sense if uh, the sprite is touching the mouse pointer, and that can be used in a conditional statement to determine if the condition is met. We have used a sensing block previously. We used the if the, the sensing block for key press in a previous lesson. So we're going to program this in our in block in our new program. We're going to get our green flag when the green flag is clicked. I like to sometimes pull all of my blocks out into my area and then put them all together. So I'm just grabbing the blocks that we need to create this program. We need a show, a hide, we need an if, then, and we need a forever. And then we need our sensing block, which is touching mouse pointer. So these are all of our blocks that we are going to put together to create the program um, that we saw in this PowerPoint as well as in the lesson plan. We're going to create a program that when Panda touches the mouse pointer, Panda hides. So we're going to look at two different things, but I want to show you the correct program first and then show you a common mistake that your learners make. Now this is something that some people struggle with in Inblock, so I want to make, I want to show you something. My mouse is on the end of this block, and when I go over this if then it's not dropping inside so when we've been working with previous blocks the shadow appears and it sets inside right that we we are familiar with that when the shadow shows up we know that block is going where we want it to go but when we work with conditionals or work with these these um these uh hexagon shapes that fit inside it's very common for learners and for users of mBlock to try and drop it with their mouse. It's actually the front. The front of the block is what needs to touch that, that uh, space. And you will see a white border appear and that tells you you're going to set it inside. If that white border is not there, it does not snap inside. So it's not the mouse, you don't, it's not your cursor that you want overlapping, it's the front of the block, okay? And that's a common mistake that learners make when they're using um, conditional statements as well as other uh, blocks where you put blocks inside of those, um, those shapes, okay? Now, one thing to keep in mind with mBlock is shapes matter, and so this conditional statement takes a um, hexagon, so you want to make sure you're putting the right shape inside. Um, and we're going to run this program. And when you run this program, what happens, what happens when you put your cursor, your mouse, on top of Panda? What happens? When we move our cursor on top of Panda, Panda disappears. Panda hides. We need to explain what's happening here with this code. So let's take a moment to dig a little deeper into this code, okay? So we put a conditional statement inside of a forever loop. That is very important. This is the program that we just made, okay? Could this program have worked if the blocks were not inside of the loop? Would it have worked? Okay, so... Right now we have it forever and we're checking if the condition is true and we're repeating steps two and three and four, two, three and four, but two and three, and we are repeating that. The program always or repeatedly checks if the condition is true. The blocks inside the conditional statement may run more than once, okay? So in this example that we just did, we are always checking. Do you see this yellow code running, this yellow border? This code is constantly running. It is checking. The program is saying, is it touching the mouse pointer? Is it touching the mouse pointer? Is it touching the mouse pointer? Over and over and over again, the computer is checking if the sprite is touching the mouse pointer because the if the condition is inside that forever. So it is forever checking. It is repeatedly checking. 
continuously checking over and over and over again if it's touching the mouse pointer. Now, if I did not put this inside of a forever loop, if I did not put this inside of a forever loop, which is this example, okay? If I said show, if touching the mouse pointer, then hide, what happens? Watch this program run. Hmm. Do you see that yellow border? Watch again. Every time I click the green flag, it is only checking one time. The program only checks once, immediately, when the program starts, if the condition is true. Okay, the blocks inside the conditional statement may run up to one time if the mouse pointer is touching the sprite. So in this example, in this example, the condition does not repeat. So it doesn't know if it is it's not going to run unless at the start it's touching the mouse pointer. So the forever is very, very important. Forever, forever if is very important. You need that forever block around it so that it's constantly checking. So in this lesson, that is the only instruction that is given to the learners before they begin to build their project. Now you will see in previous lessons, we did a lot of the, um, the independent practice together as a group and then learners just added to the independent practice. But in, in this lesson, the learners are going to on their own take everything they've learned and they are going to build their, um, they're going to build their project. Now, one thing to note is we have not we have not taught, we did not guide our learners through changing the stage background, okay? But these blocks are very, very similar to costume blocks. Remember, we had previously next costume and switch costume to. And so in the backdrop, we have these same blocks. So when we go to looks, we have next backdrop and switch backdrop. So learners should be able to take what they learned about costumes to apply it to changing the backdrop. So they should be able to um, use their prior knowledge to accomplish this. If you have learners that um, are having a difficult time with that, you can definitely teach them how these blocks work. But the lesson plan um, assumes that the learners have learned how to change the costume well and they can take their prior learning with costumes and apply it here to do the same thing with backdrops, okay? So this lesson continues and it gives the learner the instruction to create a pandas travel project where Panda walks across the, across the stage. Panda walks across the stage and the costume changes to showcase that animation effect. So Panda looks like Panda's walking. Panda is programmed to turn around, turn around in, at the edge, that rebound, and make sure Panda doesn't turn upside down. If Panda touches the edge, then change the backdrop to a new location, and they are to showcase at least five different locations Panda has visited. They're going to need to set a starting position for Panda, as well as specify a starting backdrop. Now, when I played that example program, when I played that example program at the beginning of this lesson, you will notice that every time it starts, the backdrop starts with the desert. So Panda always starts with the desert. Desert. So we've set that starting backdrop, which is an important feature and a requirement of this independent practice. Now, for learners who are um, for learners who are 
uh, ready for have more time and ready for more challenges, they can add a new sprite to create a title for Pandas Travel slideshow. And that is in the example as well. There's a title that says Pandas Travels. They can program Panda to say the location. So each time the backdrop changes, Panda can say what that backdrop is, or they can add a friend who also traveled with Panda to these locations as well. So they can continue to add features to their program based on what they've learned in previous lessons. The lesson plan for this lesson, if your students need additional assistance because we're adding in quite a few, we're adding in quite a few uh, more complexities that we haven't quite uh, showed them directly, there is a list of blocks. So if you feel like your learners need this, you can give them this list of blocks not the example code, but the list of blocks, and they can figure out how to put those blocks together to solve this problem, okay? To solve this problem. So we're going to do this together so that you can see the example. You can, um, I'm gonna open up in the lesson seven folder, I'm gonna open up the example code one and start from here because we. this is the one we did at the beginning of this lesson together. So I'm gonna start here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a conditional statement to this in order to program the backdrop, backdrop changing. Now, in order to program the backdrop changing, obviously we need to go pick some backgrounds. So I'm going to go to my back, background and add five different locations of where Panda has traveled. And um, you can select those. And I'm gonna choose few different places. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And if you go, so when you're working with cost uh, backdrops, you can go to the costumes. I don't need this blank one anymore, so I can hit the X to delete it. And so I have two backdrops. I can add another one. Um, let's see. There we go. Forest. We can add another one, desert. And these are your learner's choice. Um, you can also bring your own pictures in. So you could use this if you teach, uh, like if you wanna teach about your country that you live in, you can have different backdrops for um, different places in your country, like uh, national landmarks or things like that. But basically, I now have five backdrops added to my added to my uh, project. Okay, so we're on Panda, and we can switch to a specific back backdrop when the when the green flag is clicked. Um, that's that starting. That's setting that starting backdrop, and now. When we do this, it'll go to that one, but we haven't programmed it yet to switch the costumes. So it's a really simple program. We're gonna use what we learned on those conditional statements. If a condition is met, if a condition is met, then do what? So what do we want this to do? If what condition is met, do what? So would anybody like to provide their guess of what we want to happen here? If what condition is met, what are we trying to decide? If Panda does what, if Panda is what, then do what? We're trying to have the background change every time Panda turns and moves a direction. So what could I do here? So if Panda is touching the edge, great job. If Panda is touching, and we did not do edge in our lesson, we did mouse pointer, but edge is the other one. So if touching edge, then we can say next backdrop, okay? Okay, now we need to put that above. Did you see what happened there? Watch, this will happen with some of your learners. Is it working? It's not working because we already had Panda bounce off the edge. It needs to go above the if on edge bounce. Do you see that? That's a very, very important part of our sequencing because 
the conditional statement when it when the conditional statement is below panda never actually touches this if touching edge doesn't register that panda is touching the edge because we already had panda bounce off of the edge we already told panda bounce off the edge so it needs to go in front of it needs to go above if on edge bounce and there we go we have a working program and those extension activities can allow your learners to make this program more complex they can add a title, they can have um, additional characters, etc. So that is the example program for this lesson. We want to probably also set a starting position of Panda. Those types of things would be add more functionality to our program. Um, but every time we start our program, our starts on the forest. Okay, it's time for our lesson review, our quiz at the end of the lesson. So which of the programs below can make the character speak hello for two seconds? Now, remember, if a condition is true, then what is inside of it will run. So which of these conditions is true? Which of these conditions is true? Option A says if 50 equals 20. Option B says if 20 is greater than 50. Option C says if 70 is greater than 50, and option D says if 50 is less than 20. So which of these conditions is true? Exactly, option C. Option C is the correct answer. The rest of them will not be true. Therefore, the uh, panda will not say hello. The sprite will not say hello. Which condition needs to be met to make the sprite disappear? So in we're reading this code. Is it A, when the green flag is clicked? B, when the, when the roll touches the mouse pointer or the sprite touches the mouse pointer? C, when the stage touches the mouse pointer or when blocks touch the mouse pointer? What needs to happen in order for the, the, the sprite to hide? I'm getting some answers in. The answer is B. The answer is B. So when the sprite touches the mouse pointer, it will hide. So what is the shape of a conditional block? What is the shape of a conditional, um, well, of the condition, the, the condition being met? This one, the conditional block this one is going to be, uh, what condition are we checking for? It's, it's A, exactly. D good job. A, the condition. What condition is being met? The sensing. What sensing is being met? So as we go back to the lesson plan, um, we'll see that there is example code for that project. But this, this lesson brought in the idea of being able to check if a condition is met and then having our program react to that, you will see in your, in your uh, example code that you also have a finished project. That travel slideshow that we just did together is also here. And you can see Panda's travels. Um, and you can see that it has a title added, which is just another sprite added to it. And you can see uh, the, the project come together. So you do have that answer key or that example as well for your reference. This is a really important lesson because as we get into the next lesson, when we get into the next lesson, we're gonna use everything we just did in this lesson to be able to make a game. So right now we've made projects where um, there has been some user interaction, but do you remember all the way back in lesson one, we played the space adventures game and in the space adventures game, we had, uh, we were trying to avoid all of the asteroids that were in stars that were coming at us. And we were, if we got hit by those asteroids, we would lose health points and eventually we would die. We're gonna begin to build that in our next lesson. So our next lesson is going to walk us through building a game where you have two, two sprites um, and you are trying to avoid one of the sprites.